Hi there. This is Ryan with BetterTattooing.com. Still feeling a little bit ill, but we're out in the garage tonight, brave in the cold, to give you one reason, or at least one explanation as to why you know your tattoo faded when it healed. Check it out. All right, now that that's over, we're only doing one of these because I keep on making videos longer and longer. I don't know why I'm doing that. I guess maybe people want to watch them. I don't know. I figure you just like five minutes in and out, whatever. But I guess I've got a lot to say recently. So we'll just go with that. So why do tattoos fade when they're, you know, healed? Let's get into that. So more often than not, we're going to see fading in a tattoo just because it's normal. This is just part of the healing process. Um, when a tattoo is first done, when we're getting into the skin, I use my same skin diagram every time. It's just always what I do. It's, I think one of the easiest ways it's consistent. You know what you're getting into, right? We're breaking the epidermis, breaking through it, and we're depositing our pigment to the top, right? Because we're traumatizing this top layer of skin and the melanin layer, that's the bottom right, our pigmentation and stuff. We're getting that needle to hit a whole bunch, put pigment in there. <clears throat> that top layer of skin basically gets chewed up. You know, it should be far more traumatized than the bottom layer of skin that we're actually putting the pigment into. This tattoo is gonna catch, or this skin is gonna catch a bunch of that tattoo in these top layers of skin, right? This is the dead skin, that protective layer. As it's being damaged, it's full of, full of stuff, whatever. Just all this pigment, colors, to exudate other fluids and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling ill and it was not fun to say that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> what happens is when we're looking at it from here, right? When we're looking at it, um, we're able to see more pigment because we're not having to look through that filter of the epidermis, right? Because it's been damaged. Like there's so much pigment that's here. So it looks, that's why fresh tattoos are always just amazing and why it's kind of not fair if you go onto social media or if you check out, you know, maybe websites of artists or other places where they, they show a tattoo and it's just been done because what you're going to be getting is so much of like additional pigment that's not going to be there in the tattoo when it heals out, right? Um, only the pigment that's going to get down into the actual dermis is going to stay there, you know? Even then, some of it's going to be absorbed back into your body. Those cells are going to take it away to your lymph nodes, right? We'll just do LN for that. And uh, they'll stay there and, you know, tint them forever, which isn't good if you're trying to get an MRI in the future. But anyways, that can be another video for sure. Um, but all this stuff that's superficially placed in the top layer of skin is just going to be, you know, as it heals, it's going to be pushed out, you know? All that stuff just gets ejected. It gets moved out, shed out. And that's why when you're healing, usually you'll see like, I mean, if the tattoo wasn't too deep or wasn't too you know, traumatic and stuff, you'll just get like this little flaking on your skin. At most, it should be like, oh, I don't want to say scab at all. It should just be a little bit of sloughing, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to be tinted, right? Whatever color you're using and stuff, that stuff has been moved out. It's collected into the top of the body, just as the skin cells are naturally being pushed out and regenerated, right? And then that stuff gets, gets shed off and becomes dust or, you know, damages your sheets. You got to go buy new ones because, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so automatically, as soon as it's healed, you're having to look through that layer of epidermis now that's fully formed, right? It, the melanin is back. It's, you know, the, the actual coloration of the body is gonna be, you know, filtered with light that's passing through two ways. And then the skin's gonna be thicker, right? So it's, all, it's like looking through a piece of glass, or if you have like a frosted piece of glass and you're looking through it, you can think about the frosting level as how much pigment is in there, right? And it's gonna be occluding that, that interpretation for the viewer. They're not gonna be able to see exactly what's going on because they have to look through all that. So it's gonna look like it's faded. It's not faded, it's just in the skin. Now, if you have bad technique when you're doing this, what happens is, let's just start all over here with that one. If you have bad technique when you're doing that, what happens is you end up with um, a tattoo that, you know, maybe for the first three days, five days, 15 days, however long it takes to like heal your tattoo. Let's say that the epidermis is completely torched. The tattoo is gonna be collected up here, right? 
This is, you know, we're gonna say not deep enough. You have very little pigment in the top layer of the dermis. Maybe it's even superficially laid in between those two layers, depending on the location, right? Maybe the skin's a little bit thicker. Maybe it's a little bit more pliable. Maybe there's a little bit less connective tissue. It's just uneven when it goes in. When all this lifts off and it's gone, you have no ink left in the, the tattoo. Well, this is something I've seen quite a lot with people who are just getting into doing things like portrait work, things like that, where they're afraid of making a mistake. So they're being very light with their application of tones. And so they're not getting a decent amount of saturation into that, that layer of skin. The, the thing that's gonna make the tattoo be really, really bold, you know, have, have some meat to it. If you're vegetarian, I guess have some soy to it. I don't, I don't know if you can't eat soy, but whatever else, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean that as being a rude person. Anyways, if you don't have a lot there, I mean, there's just not gonna be enough for that light energy that's you know having to pass through our skin to either reflect or refract off of, right? So that we can see it. Um, that's the whole point of that, right? Like we wanna make sure that tattoo is gonna be going in far enough. Um, other things we see, like a, a lot of times when you go to conventions, I'll see people who are trying to win um, trophies. You know, traveling tattooers are, are kind of, uh, I've met a few that have, you know, been, um, who've done this. Um, and they'll superficially lay stuff on the top of the skin. The tattoo looks fantastic, you know? And six months later, after the skin, cause I mean, it's like a 10 hour session to do something super complex, is fully healed, like 80% of the pigment's gone. You know, it doesn't have anything in there. So you're left with this tattoo that's just incomplete. Uh, you've paid a ton of money for it and it's just not there, right? Um, so how do we fix it? So we have the three, the rule of threes, uh, and we'll just do threes, right, for this. It's rule of thirds in general. But the rule of threes is something very specific in tattooing, right? On art design, you're gonna have something that's gonna be equated to balance, right, where you have a, a box grid, you know, you try to align things that are running, anyways. Understanding plane and depth of design. We have an article about it on the website if you wanna read about it, but I don't wanna talk about it right now. Um, you have that, you have the trad dudes, you know, we'll do this one. Rule of three is one, depth of design. Oh, it's jam, jeez, crazy. Um, <laughs> boy, I'm not doing well with my spelling today. Uh, penmanship, anyways, depth of design. The other one's gonna be the old school. And I'm gonna do this now because I'm tired of that old school. Um, well, old school, they want to have a third shading, a third color, a third skin, right? Um, the next rule, the three that we're going to have is three and done. That's three passes. You get lining, shading, color, done. Or lining, shading, shading, done. You only do three passes over anything on the tattoo. And this is actually probably the one that we need to think about. And there's... There's a bunch of other threes as well, but we don't need to get into those either. Um, this this is just the one that we want, right? Three and done. If we're having a tattoo that's fading excessively, probably what's happened is pigment hasn't been implanted correctly. There's too much trauma to the top of the skin. It takes a little bit longer to heal and it's been ejected. So that's, that's one reason. I mean, we, there's a bunch more that can cause this to happen, but this is probably the easiest one to fix, right? Fixing it involves committing the pigment to skin, making sure you're getting the, the ink and the needles like down to where they need to be and depositing the pigment there. Don't be scared, right? It's easier to fix a tattoo that is committed to the skin than try to make sense of one that is really bad. And it's not, like artistically, I know that you guys can throw me in the mud for this one. Um, artistically, it could be a disaster and oh my gosh, everything is bad. Uh, and it's really hard to fix a committed tattoo. You'd be like, oh, go get laser. Don't ever get laser. Laser's really bad. Uh, go, go do this, go do that. Now it's fine. I mean, if there's money, then there's a way to get rid of it. But emotionally for the client, if they have a tattoo that they've invested in, that they really feel strongly about, that there's an emotional connection, they t spend a ton of money on it, and it comes out perfect, and then it's slowly taken away from them, that removal of value, that utility being removed is so much greater than something that is there and just needs to maybe be polished, right? Because they're gonna feel cheated far more from a person who is considered amazing at what they do on paper or maybe even, you know, in their portfolio and they're not able to pull it out. So yeah, how do you fix it? Commit it to skin, 
do what you're gonna do and just remember three passes and get it done if it doesn't work go home let it heal bring them back in finish it then anyways that's it for today this is ryan from better tattooing signing off Thank you.